Hi, welcome to this episode of Lightboard Lessons. And today we're going to talk about CPU and cores and threads and how that relates to TMM and data plane and control plane. We had a, questions in the, a question in the forums about that. And so as I did a little research, uh, found that there were some things I didn't really know about how TMOS behaved. And, and even TMOS's behavior has changed um, depending on what version you're on. So we're going to start by looking at the Viprion 2250 blade, and that is a DecaCore processor. So it's a single processor, and so if we kind of draw the single processor there, and within the processor, we have 10 cores. Okay, and as I draw this, in each core, there are two threads, and, and those are within hyper-threading technology, those are, uh, those are called uh, hyper-threads, and they're, they're logical cores. So you have 10 physical cores in the single processor, the DecaCore processor on the Vibrion 2250 blade. And so uh, as you look at the physical nomenclature, this would be core 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And then each thread would be, this, is, this would be your 0 thread and your 1 thread, and then your, um, this would be 0, 1, 0, 1, and on. And so, If you look at uh, TMOS before 11.5, each hyperthread had a separate TMM running. And so in this case, because there's two threads per core and there's 10 cores, you would have 20 versions of, of TMM running in this system. And so they would be labeled zero all the way through 19. So I can put a few of these up here just so you can see. Actually, I can just go ahead and draw them out. So eight through nine, and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So you had zero through 19, and TMM was running on every thread. So that is completely fine, and, and everything's okay, but that's for data plane. And so before 11.5, you also had the control plane. And so if we kind of draw a line here across, you have your TMM handling data, and then like 89% of uh, the thread available for data plane, and 11% for control. So this is data, and this is control, okay? And so what, what you would end up with is context switching between uh, the processor handling data tasks and control plane tasks. And so with the context switching, it introduced performance impacting latency on one side, but then it also uh, introduced blocking behaviors on the other. So data plane might be interrupted because of a control plane issue, or you had a prevention of a control plane task because of things going on in the data plane. So what, they, uh, what the developers did starting in 11.5 is they switched to, and I'm not gonna draw all these cores, but if you look at the same processor, and let's go ahead and draw maybe two of them, okay? We still have core zero and core one. And what they did is they would dedicate, oh, actually, let me be consistent with my colors here. So if we split the hyper threads. This is still hyperthread zero and one, zero and one. But what they did is they would dedicate this thread, the, the even numbered thread, to data. And this is um, you know, high priority process for the TMM thread. So data, TMM process, and that one is 
high priority. So when TMM is labeled, this is TMM0. And then this one here is TMM2. Even though it's only the second TMM, we're skipping the odds so that they're consistent no matter what version you're on, that, that the even thread keeps the name. So what you have with, and I'm gonna expand this, so let me, let me kind of expand the odd thread. If you look at the odd thread, let's expand that. And this is established for control plane. But what you have is that we're gonna take 80% of this and 20%. Now under normal circumstances, this thread is available for control plane issues uh, or control plane tasks. But when TMM thread, so say on, on, this, um, on this core, TMM2 hits 80% utilization. If we're at greater than or equal utilization here, then what's gonna happen is this thread will be, eight, will be halted at 80%. So, you know, like say four out of every five uh, milliseconds, this thread is halted it's still gonna be able to use the thread for control plane tasks, but it's just that you know, we want to prioritize the data plane, and so data plane gets priority, control plane still gets to work, it's just gotta, it has to work at a reduced rate. And so if you see that, if this happens on the system, what happens is in var log kern.log in that in, um, in that file, you'll see a log message for um, idle enforcer. And when you see an idle enforcer log, that means that this scenario has happened, TMM thread is at 80% utilization or greater, and so uh, the control plane thread is going to be reduced capacity down to 20% until this threshold is crossed uh, back on the way down. So with this change from before 11.5, in fact, let me write that up there. So this is pre 11.5, and this is 11.5 and up. So with those changes, you know, what, what kind of impacts are we looking at? And so obviously we have an improved data plane performance because we have priority established on the, the zero threads and we're gonna halt the control plane if system utilization is high. So that's improved data plane performance. We also have improved control plane responsiveness even when the system is uh, heavily utilized or especially when the system is heavily utilized. So one of the things, if you've licensed SSL or you do TMM counting in your iRules or like an AFM uh, config for DDoS, if you have reduced your TMM count from 20 to 10, you know, that's something to be concerned about. For SSL, the system is aware and it handles that for you. If, you've, if you're doing TMM counting for iRules use, you will need to make that adjustment yourself. And then the other impact to be aware of is if you have VCMP guests that want to take advantage of the, the um, hyper-threading split, then you, your, your hypervisor has to be at 11.5 or higher. So hopefully this has been helpful. I'll link to the solution out on Ask F5. And uh, we look forward to seeing you out there in the community.